Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. Let's hear what's going on. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve you. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition I will make a covenant with you, that I may put out all your right eyes and bring reproach on all Israel. Then the elders of Jabesh said to him, Hold off for seven days that we may send messengers to all the territory of Israel, and then if there is no one to save us, we will come out to you. So the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul and told the news in the hearing of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. Now there was Saul coming behind the herd from the field, and Saul said, What troubles the people that they weep? And they told him the words of the men of Jabesh. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard the news, and his anger was greatly aroused. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. So here's our situation. This actually was part of what provoked them to make a king. They wanted a king like all the nations. They were afraid of this guy. Well, here he is. Getting a king did not stop them, uh, didn't stop Nahash from causing havoc. So they are sad. They weep. Who's going to protect them? They've got a king now, but he's untested. It's kind of brand new. But uh, they bring message to Saul. Saul does this highly symbolic thing and sends out, you know, pieces of the oxen across the land and boom, brings everybody back very quickly. But anyway, here's the part that, that maybe is more interesting. Verse 6, notice, you know, was this just Saul's anger or, or what's going on here? Or we just, would we never have anger for uh, followers of God? Listen again to verse 6. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard this news and his anger was greatly aroused, so he took a yoke of oxen. So this business about cutting up the oxen into pieces and sending them out through Israel, the pieces, this all comes as, as Saul is under the, the direct influence of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God came upon Saul. So this is something that's Spirit-led, and it gets the attention of the people. And in just a few days, boom, everybody's there, we're ready. We'll see tomorrow how many soldiers there are, but there are hundreds of thousands so what can we gather from this? One thing we can gather from this is be careful about assuming that something is of the Holy Spirit or not of the Holy Spirit based on what you think or what I think. Uh, we, we might have this automatic list of things that we think. Uh, the Holy Spirit would, would do these things, but he wouldn't do these things. Just be, just be careful there because sometimes the Holy Spirit does things in a very different way than you or I might think of doing them. We are not the judge of whether the Holy Spirit's in it. Let's let God be the judge. And then also notice here, the people do come out. They gather up. They come out and they are going to defend the, their people. They're going to defend the land and their nation. So interesting business here. Another piece that's kind of interesting, Saul is, is building off, if he's playing also off of the influence of Samuel, everybody in the land knew that Samuel was a prophet, but Saul is kind of an untested new king. Yeah, tall guy, handsome Seems like he's got what he needs, but we don't know. He's kind of an untested quantity. Samuel's been around for years. Everybody knows him. So the king leans on Samuel a little bit here. Come out in the name basically of Saul and Samuel. And so they're coming. So we'll see what happens next. Let's pause and pray. Dear Father in heaven, so we think we've got the Holy Spirit figured out. And yet, Lord, we know that we do not have the Holy Spirit figured out. We are not wiser than you Thank you, Lord, that your people are given the right to defend themselves and their women and children and their families. And so, Lord, help us today to not leave behind that business. We don't just uh, farm that out to the police or to the army, but we actually are charged before you to defend, uh, defend our own families. So bless us, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Something's stirring. We're going to have a big fight here between the, the Ammonites and and Saul, the first, the first big battle. Let's see what happens tomorrow morning. In the meantime, may God be with you.